Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks. My name is Peter Nelson, and I'm here to guide you in everything you need to know about gemstones and jewelry. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who's also in the trade, and it came to my attention that even people inside of the trade are not aware of all of the properties of the stones that they're dealing with on a daily basis. So today what I want to do is talk about what are some of those properties that get mixed up, and then I want to tell you about one tool that can help you to distinguish those two different types of stones. So the feature that we're going to be talking about is actually in this piece of star sapphire that I've got right here, and it's called color zoning. Now color zoning is when the crystal is growing and sometimes it's got certain nutrients and chemicals available to it, so the color grows much more strongly in that zone, hence color zoning. But at other times in its growth, that color may not be there. It may be a different color or it may be entirely colorless. Both exist. For example, I've even seen deposits of sapphire that had ruby growing directly on side of it. So you can find some stones that are one color and the other, and then cut them together, getting a red and a blue, or a purple and a blue, or whatever's available at the time. Very interesting stuff, and this is completely natural. Some other great examples of color zoning are tourmaline. Tourmaline can grow with one distinct color here and another completely distinct color there, so-called bicolor tourmaline, or some people like to call it watermelon tourmaline, depending on which colors are growing together. But tourmaline comes in so many different colors, watermelon doesn't really work for all of them. So there are many different types of stones that can have color zoning. But the thing that we need to be very careful about is distinguishing between color zoning and pleochroism. If we're trying to identify the stone, we need to keep these two concepts separated. So color zoning can exist in many different types of stones. It doesn't necessarily have to be a doubly refractive stone, meaning that it splits light. Some of them do, like tourmaline and sapphire, while others may not. So if we're practicing gem identification, we need to be very careful. Are we observing pleochroism, or is this just color zoning? Because if it's color zoning and we assume that it's a doubly refractive stone, we could be totally thrown off the trail and never find the correct identity of that stone. So color zoning happens because the stone's growth, but pleochroism is a fundamental part of the crystal's nature. Doubly refractive minerals are asymmetrical on their most basic, basic building blocks called the unit cell. So in one direction of the crystal, light is going to be able to travel faster, and in a different direction of the crystal, it's going to travel slower. So inside of some crystal materials, the light is allowed to pick up more color in one direction, and maybe even a different color in the other direction. And that's why when some stones are rotated 90 degrees, you'll see a different color. So pleochroism only occurs with doubly refractive stones. It's a key piece of information for identification. So the dichroscope takes that characteristic and puts it to work. So there's two kinds of dichroscopes. There's one with a polarizing filter, and then there's the one that I prefer, which has calcite inside of it. It's got a small window with two pieces of calcite. One of them is rotated 90 degrees. Because it is such a tiny viewing window, what's going to happen is if we observe a stone using a strong light source, perhaps like our three-way torch here, then when we observe the stone, much in the same technique that we'd use with the spectroscope, then if the stone that we're observing splits light and has pleochroism, that strong difference in colors, then the dichroscope can confirm for us that that stone is in fact doubly refractive. Now, a word of caution to you. If you do not clearly see two different colors, that is not a guarantee that it is singly refractive. Some stones, like Goshenite, which are completely colorless, are still doubly refractive stones. Moissanite is another stone that can be colorless, and it is doubly refractive as well. The dichroscope will not help us in this situation. You will need to use the polariscope or the refractometer. But since we're obsessed with colored stones on this channel, the dichroscope can be a great boon for you, especially if you're out in the field and you don't have access to a full gemological laboratory. And it works on rough crystals, as long as they have pleochroism. So absolutely, there are some stones that will have both color zoning and pleochroism. Tourmaline is a great example of that. Sapphire sometimes also is. When we observe with the dichroscope, what we want to do is be very honest to ourselves and look at the stone from several different directions. If we are certain that we can see two different colors in those windows, then we know for sure that it is doubly refractive. If you are hesitant and you're not quite sure, check from a different direction. Even doubly refractive stones will still have one direction, at least, called the optic axis, and in that direction, light will not be split. It's basically a singly refractive direction in a doubly refractive stone. So checking from multiple different angles is very important. But if you can indeed be sure that you see two distinct colors, then that is proof for us. This tool can't lie. 
but your eyes can, so don't let them. Some doubly refractive stones have a very strong pleochroism, oftentimes tourmaline is a good example, and some stones have a much weaker pleochroism, for example this peridot and this aquamarine. But strong or weak, as long as we are sure that we see those two different colors, then we're certain. There are many different places that you can pick up a dichroscope. Usually they're under 50 bucks, sometimes 30 or 20. So shop around for the one that's the best fit for you. I think I got mine off of Amazon. If you don't like to feed the beast, you can buy it from Sachi Tools or wherever else you want. And then you too can have one in your gym kit. But if you've got any questions for me, you can head over to gemshepherd.com where you can sign up for our newsletter or contact me directly. Otherwise, leave a comment down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already, tell all your friends about me, and until next time, bye bye